Here in Alabama, water is a major gift that the earth has given us. Well, maybe given is the wrong word, but it's a major gift. And sometimes when you have a lot of something, you forget to be mindful of your use of it and be mindful of how important it is. We have rivers and streams and lakes and um, the Gulf. The Gulf of Mexico is nearby. The Gulf, in fact, is where my family goes for spring break. We went just this year, and it's amazing. The water is crystal clear. The um, sand is fluffy and white. The waves are gentle. It's warm in the sun and warm in the water, and it's a gift. And as I sat and watched my children playing in the water, reading my book, sipping my iced tea, something kept bothering me. And the thing that kept bothering me was this, you know, this little bit of an ominous feel to the whole place because in 2010, on April 20th, in fact, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill began. In the Gulf with 49 million barrels of oil, it covered 60,000 square miles. And the effects are still being felt. As a matter of fact, last month, BP released a report saying that everything was fine. It was all going to be well. The Gulf was recovering. Things were happening the way they were supposed to. At the very same week, um, an investigative reporter in Louisiana found that BP was in the middle of a cleanup of a 200,000-pound tar mat that had washed up onto one of the barrier islands in Louisiana. They also found two bottlenose dolphins that had died nearby at another barrier island. This problem is not over, but our attention has been turned away from the, the oil spill. We've become distracted by other things. That was, that was five years ago. I think that that's part of the commit to respond responsibility that I have as somebody who lives in Alabama is not to forget the things that have happened and not to look away. It's important to maintain that gaze on things that are hard to look at. Our earth is a giver, and when someone is a giver, they become ill. They give too much. A lot of times they don't have good boundaries, and they can become sick. Think about what happens if you get sick. Perhaps your laundry piles up or your dishes pile up. The groceries are all gone. And when you get better, you've reached this point of almost no return. Things cannot return back to the way they were. Um, it's called the tipping point when we refer to the environment. The environment has been such a giver and the earth has been such a giver that we are getting to the point of no return, and with this commit to respond push from the UUA and from other partners in environmental justice, we have an opportunity to push back on that scale. Cornell West says, I cannot be an optimist, but I am a prisoner of hope. I can't be an optimist because climate change is real. I am a prisoner of hope. This, this is a hopeful month for me. I look at all your posts on the Facebook page, and I am hopeful at seeing people who are not going to eat beef anymore or turning down their thermostats or paying attention to how much water they use. We're doing some good work here. My commitment is to put a clothesline in this backyard. That's not going to be very fun. Hanging up the clothes for eight people is a big commitment on my part, and I'm not gonna do it alone. It's a family commitment. But think about the impact we can make in the next 10 years if most of our laundry is dried outside instead of in the house. That is a huge dent in the carbon footprint that we're making right now. Let's push back on that tipping point. Let's all be part of the solution that brings equilibrium back to us. Maybe not where it was before the Industrial Revolution, but someplace that our future is possible.